1959, the British government and the American government made a decision, a joint decision, a joint decision that could have easily annihilated mankind. Join me today and find out exactly why that was. Greetings and welcome to Kim Discovering History. Today we're at Harrington Airfield, or better known as RAF Harrington. Um, in the days of World War II, uh, this area was used for uh, bombing missions, reconnaissance missions um, in the uh, World War II war effort. But today, primarily, we're here because of another reason. And that reason is that in 1959, a decision was made to uh, build missile launch pads here in the heart of uh, Northamptonshire and these launch pads uh, were known as Project Emily. Uh, so today we're going to be having a look at one of these uh, launch pads in a bit more detail and give you an idea of what uh, it's all about. So uh, yeah, let's go and have a look. So, 1959, the Americans and the British uh, were desperate to, to sort of sort this Cold War situation out. Uh, they needed some form of deterrent uh, and the days of the, the Vulcan bomber flying over, <coughs> dropping uh, bombs was pretty much going out of fashion. They needed something quicker, more responsive, and uh, dare I say it, more devastating. Uh, so they came up with the idea of the Thor missile. It's an IRBM, intermediate range ballistic missile, still capable of causing carnage. Blast radius, three miles, anything within three miles, completely incinerated within seconds. So we're talking of destructive power here. And the British government and the American government decided let's have 20 sites in England, each with three of these missiles. So that will give you some idea of the destructive power of this all combined. Adjacent to, adjacent to each side of the blast walls, there were channels that ran down in opposite direction. Um, 
they followed down for about 60 to 70 feet away from the launch pad and each one came into a square area this particular one we're looking at now would have contained the kerosene tanks kerosene tanks part of the kerosene that was mixed with the liquid oxygen to fuel the rocket the other end uh, we had the oxygen tanks hence the reason they kept them well apart because together well you'll see as this, as all rockets uh, they create an explosive force um, to obviously launch the rocket. We're now looking at the, the location of where the, the canopy that covered the missile would rest in its resting state um, during the launch of the, of the missile itself. This, the canopy, and you'll see in the pictures that the canopy would be brought back all the way back to its stop point here and it was quite a large canopy you know this had to cover all the launch gantry and everything in its resting place uh, before the launch of the actual missile itself um, okay you can even still see you've got the original the original bolts that held the rails of which the canopy slid down and you had two of these one this side and you had one the other side Let's just take a step back. Here we are, 1959. Um, we've got our wonderful Americans uh, government and the, the, the British government. We've come to the decision to, to install these sites uh, as a deterrent. These were only going to be here for five years. That's what we were told. Five years. Beyond that, we won't need them. Um, well, we certainly wouldn't need them if they'd fired them off uh, because we won't be here talking about it but the destructive power 60 warheads zooming off to Russia now we're not going to think for one minute that that's it because then there would probably be a thousand times that many coming back so we knew that once these were fired that would be the end and I won't be here talking to you and you won't be there sitting in your comfortable chair or on your train watching this video or wherever you are, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> 